The men's Tour de France has come to an end once more, rolling onto the Champs Elysees under the warm Parisian sun. But as the dust settles on Jonas Vingegaard's victory, we began thinking about the centenary edition, which, just a decade ago, was won by Chris Froome. Things might look the same, some microclad bloke rolls into Paris wearing yellow, but look closely and you'll spot a fair few things that are different. In fact, bikes have changed a hell of a lot from 2013 to 2023. From advanced aero tube shapes and integrated cockpits to tubeless tyres and one by, here's how much the Tour de France winning bike has changed in just 10 years. The main change that we've seen affect everything is aerodynamics. Sure, riders such as Froome were making aero mods to their bikes back in 2013, but their efforts were largely limited to fitting slightly deeper wheels for flat stages. Vingegaard's bikes, meanwhile, have both been optimised to reduce drag. Let's look at his frames. While Froome was limited to just his Pinarello Dogma 65.1 Think2 frame, Vingegaard switched between the Cervelo R5 for the mountains and the Cervelo S5 for the faster days. Although the R5 still incorporates aero detailing such as the integrated handlebar, which we'll discuss later, it's far more traditional in its shaping, so we'll focus on the S5 for now. The S5 is fully optimised for slicing through the wind, with deep truncated aerofoil tube shapes throughout and the innovative V-shaped stem. There are even distinct echoes of the Cervelo P5 time trial bike in the S5 design, underlining the focus on aerodynamic efficiency. The seat tube hugs the rear wheel with barely enough room for light to pass through, while up front the head tube is sculpted to smooth the airflow. Froome's 2013 Dogma, meanwhile, featured far less aero profiling of the tube shapes, along with seat stays that flowed directly into the top tube. While it might not be as fast as Vingegaard's S5 frame, that wavy dogma silhouette is iconic of an era when Team Sky dominated the tour. Since then, the dogma has had a bit of an aero makeover, but Pinarello still only offers Team Ineos Grenadiers one bike for all road stages in the form of the Dogma F. Deep carbon wheels will probably make any bike look fast, but manufacturers have been developing their hoops a lot since 2013 to eke out every last bit of speed. Froome used Shimano's Dura Ace wheels, which were, at the time, of the tubular variety. On high mountain days, Froome would use the 1100g C24 wheel set to bring his bike down as close as possible to the UCI 6.8 kilo minimum weight limit. He also had the option of the 35mm deep C35 wheel set, but would mostly switch to the deeper C50 wheel set for faster days. These featured a 24mm externally wide rim that was designed to work with the narrow tubular tyres of the time. In contrast, Vingegaard's wheels are both deeper and wider, though we did see him use a set of 24mm tubular tyres on his S5 for the opening hilly stages of the Tour to keep weight down. That suggests that while times might be changing, weight weenieism isn't fully gone from pro cycling just yet. Reserve is the wheel sponsor of Jumbo Visma, and Vingegaard did then switch to the brand's 4044 wheel set with the Corsa Pro TLR or Vittoria's time trial specific Corsa Speed G2.0 TLR tubeless tyres. The inner rim width of 25mm shows just how much wider wheels are today. Froome's wheels, remember, weren't even that wide externally, and as we'll discuss later, wheels today are mostly tubeless. Aero has also impacted the front end of bikes in a way that we didn't see on Froome's 2013 bike. His Pro Vibe bar features a traditional round shape and it is paired with a very precise 126mm alloy Pro Vibe stem. When you take a look at this setup with the smaller spacer above the stem, a generous upper bearing cover and the old style DI2 junction box sitting under the stem, it's a visibly more cluttered look than Vingegaard's. Wireless gears and hydraulic disc brakes have given bike designers much more freedom to make front ends sleeker, 
but there is something fantastically old school about Froome's setup. Vingegaard's R5 does look a little more traditional, but the bike still features a fully integrated one-piece cockpit from Vision. Integration then is certainly the name of the game in 2023. Many of the changes that we've noted from wider rims to integrated front ends have been helped along by the introduction of disc brakes. Froome's 2013 bike, along with pretty much every bike in the peloton back then, sported rim brakes, but every bike at the 2023 Tour de France used disc brakes. That's been the case since Tadej Pogacar used rim brakes at the 2021 race. Alongside better braking, disc brakes have also influenced frame design, with seat stays and forts being somewhat freed from the shackles of supporting a rim brake. Froome's bike used the Shimano Dura Ace 9000 rim brake calipers with carbon-specific pads. Vingegaard's bike, meanwhile, has the SRAM Red disc brake calipers. But disc brakes have also opened the door to another change. Most rim brakes struggled to fit anything more than a 28mm tyre. Now that was fine when road racers used 23 and 25mm tyres, but the team mechanics had to get inventive when riders asked for bigger tyres in the cobbled classics. Now that wide tyres are standard and tubeless tyres paired with a 25mm inner rim width on wheels such as Vingegaard's will sit a little wider than stated on the sidewall. As a result, we saw some incredibly wide tyres when we went to the start of this year's Tour de France, including tyres measuring wider than 32mm on Pogacar's bike. Now, if you want to see more tech trends that we spotted, make sure you check out that video once we're done here. Riders commonly use 28 and 30mm tyres these days, and we've seen a growing number of TT tyres being used in general road stages. Riders really are doing everything possible to save some precious watts. It's worth noting that wide tubeless tyres haven't completely taken over though. As we saw on Vingegaard's bike at the Grand Depart, narrow tubs are still used on some stages. They're just not the standard like they were in 2013, and the Dane switched to using wider tubeless tyres later in the race. With all component brands now offering 12-speed group sets, Riders are opting to run massive gears all of the time. Vingegaard's bike had 52 39 tooth chainrings paired with a wide ranging 10 to 33 tooth cassette out back. SRAM's use of the small 10 tooth cog on the cassette means that he has a massive top gear, bigger in fact than the 54 11 top gear now commonly seen on Jura's while his 39-33 lowest gear is far smaller than Froome's 39-28. As a result, you'd think that the current crop of road racers would be changing their gearing during the race less. For Shimano-sponsored riders, this is largely true, but for SRAM riders, there's one extra consideration to make, and that is whether you ditch your front derailleur altogether and use a one by setup. Vingegaard and his teammate Wout van Aert used a one by drivetrain for the hilly opening stage in Bilbao, before returning to a single chain ring for Vingegaard's yellow bike on the final stage into Paris. While a one by setup might very occasionally be used on a time trial bike back in 2013, it was previously unheard of to use one on a road stage of the Tour de France. Oh, and Little Trek's Mads Pedersen won stage 8 on one by 2 Is the tide turning back in the favour of one by? While we're looking at the crank set, Froome's bike has two more notable features. The first is the beautiful SRM power meter. These accurate and reliable units have gone slightly out of fashion, being replaced by models from the group set brands like SRAM and Shimano, or other third-party companies such as 4 and Wahoo. While SRM hasn't completely gone from the peloton, overlies chainrings seem to have been a fad that has largely died out. Like the oval rings of Bradley Wiggins before him, Froome's chainrings were designed to eliminate the dead spot in his pedal stroke. While they can't have done him too much harm, oval chainrings were nowhere to be found at this year's race. Pro bikes these days are much more likely to conform to sponsor requirements. And with that, all I want to know down in the comments is whether you would want to own Froome's 2013 bike or one of Jonas Vingegaard's 2023 bikes. 
I have to say, I'd probably take Froome's 2013 bike. Anyway, if you liked this video, remember to give it a like, subscribe for more, and we've got a Tour de France playlist, so why don't you go and check that out?